Pastor Courtney and Pastor Anna here, and we just want to welcome you to this week's Wacky, Wacky Wednesday. Wednesday. This is our last Wacky Wednesday. We have done four of these. Pastor Anna's going to cry. Don't you cry, Abe. Okay? <laughs> it's still going to be fun. So we have something super great for you tonight and a super fun challenge. Remember, we're talking about creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. God made you to be like him, and he's creative. He made you to be creative, too, and we'll talk about that more tonight. Why don't you check out what creativity is all about in this video called One Thing. Everybody, did you know that it's National Watermelon Day? And also, look at how tiny this guy is. Anyways, I'm gonna create a unique work of art to celebrate by smashing this watermelon onto the floor. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't you dare, young man. Okay. I'll do it after. I tell you this really cool story I heard about Leo, who is my cousin's aunt, dogs, hairdressers, neighbors, so I forget. Anyways, he's just a great kid. And I heard his story. Now Leo's eyesight is so bad, he's had to wear glasses as long as he can remember. And glasses make everything harder. Other kids are like, watch it, four eyes. And the beach is the worst. Unless Leo wants to see the waves in low death. Every year, Leo begs, can I just get contacts? Because contacts would give him laser vision. But every time mom says, not yet, sweetie, and reminds him, God gave you beautiful eyes. The only thing worse than mom being uncool in front of Leo's friend is the uncool assignment from Leo and Josh's art teacher. They're supposed to create a picture of some place they saw this summer by drawing or painting or throwing ripe veggies at the wall. Yeah, yeah, I know. A tomato is actually a fruit. Now, some creative license, please. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mom sends Josh and Leo away to do their project. And Josh draws himself in the mountains on an alien planet. But Leo's like, I can't draw. I can't paint. Not to mention that I didn't even go anywhere this summer, but here. <gasps> Suddenly, Leo knows what he can create. And when he's finished, everyone can see with Leo's eyes. Mom and Josh think it's really cool he created something so unique. They give him a thumbs up and a standing ovation and red tomato confetti. So kids, remember that wearing glasses is a superpower and that creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. Ooh, I just thought of something even more creative that I can do with this watermelon. I'm gonna slice it up and give everybody a piece. A teeny, teeny, tiny piece. A little bitty. All right, bye guys, I'll see you next time. Hey look, I got watermelon this time. What's up, friends? You guys have been doing so awesome on your challenges, all three of our teams. I'll give you a hint who's in the lead. It's our preschoolers. What? I had a feeling. All right, we're gonna tell you your point totals on Friday. A big reveal, right? Big reveal, yes. But until then, this is your final challenge. What? I know, can you believe it? The last one, the last dance. This week's challenge will be, will freeze out the competition. <laughs> Pretty accurate what you're all gonna look like soon. And if you haven't taken a shower, you can thank us later. We're calling this challenge Ice Ice Baby. Ice Ice Baby. How do you play? This is how you play. All right. First, you will need to fill a giant bowl like this one. Next, ask an adult sibling or friend to dump this entire bowl of freezing ice cold water on your head. What? What? I know. <laughs> but that's it. Here's the catch. You have to get this on video. And pro tip, it would be a good idea to do this challenge outside or in a bathtub, because it's gonna get wet and slippery. <laughs> Anyways, complete this challenge, 
dry off a bit, then post or send us your video to win 2,000 points for your team. Whoa, that's a lot of points. That's right. That could change everything. Everything. 2,000 pe points, people. <laughs> 2,000 points, people. 2,000 points, that's a lot. All right, it's for the tough, it's for the brave, it's the strong, and if you complete this challenge, you're gonna go down in NH, NH Kids and NH Tots history. history. So complete this challenge before Friday. Mm -hmm. Send us your video so you can take your team all the way to the top. Awesome. We can't wait to see your videos. Go soak yourself. It's going to be awesome.
wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna I just wanna thank you cause everything you made is so job raising money for BGMC. Remember, our Epic Give Day is coming up September 13th, and it has been so cool to see what you have already started doing to raise money for our missionaries all over the world. So we've got people doing sit-ups, baking cookies, chores, selling all sorts of things, lemonade and more. And I know you guys have tons more great ideas because you are so creative. And I love that this is what we're talking about this month, being creative, because that's exactly what we need to do to get ready to give to God. Remember, I'm challenging every single kid to give $100 for BGMC. That kind of probably sounds like a lot of money to save up, but remember, a lot of people believe in you. So try something. If it doesn't work the best, don't give up. There's more things you can do. Epic Give Day, September 13th. Also, we posted on our Facebook page and via email these pledge posters. I know it's kind of hard to see. Um, I have some physical copies you can pick up if you are meeting with us on Sundays. If not, you can download one, and this helps you keep track of everything you are raising by $10 each. So this starts with 100 and you can go from there. Also, last Sunday was our first day back in NH Kids on Sunday mornings. We were here for the 9.30 and 11 o'clock service and we'll be doing that same thing this week. NH Tots, you will be meeting for the 9.30 service and then you can join your parents for the 11 o'clock. So, so excited to have all kindergarten through fifth graders up here in room 230 with me on Sunday mornings. We'll be meeting together for the next few weeks, and you will hear more when we split into K2 and third to fifth grade. But we would love to see you. I'll continue to post um, all of our stuff online and via email if you're not quite ready to join us yet so you can be connected to NH Kids. Love you guys and hope to see you this Sunday. Our story today starts with a man named Paul. We've heard a lot about Paul lately, haven't we? Paul didn't always believe in Jesus. In fact, we know that for years, Paul actually tried to stop people from believing in Jesus. But once Paul became a follower of Jesus, he traveled all over to teach people and encourage them. Paul even started, well, a lot of churches. And he wrote letters to those churches. And that's what most of the New Testament is, letters written by Paul. Paul started a church in a city called Ephesus. And the letter to the Ephesians is what he wrote to those guys. The believers in Ephesus were from different backgrounds. They were as different as could be. But the one thing they had in common is that they all believed in Jesus. Now, Paul got in trouble a lot. And one of the times he was in trouble, he was thrown in a Roman jail. He could have whined about it, complained, but instead he got creative with the time that he had. He wrote letters to all the churches he had started, including the one in Ephesus to the Ephesians. He reminded them that no matter what, God had created them to do good things for others. I want you to listen to the words that he wrote in this letter to the Ephesians. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 10. Paul writes, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You know, God created us as his handiwork, the works of his hands. And it says in his word, we were made in his image. Now, we don't look exactly like him because we all look different. 
But what it means is he created us to be like him so we can show the world around us what he's like. We know that God is creative. I mean, look at the days of creation. It's amazing. He gave us the ability to be like him, and that means we can be creative too. Now, I've got some examples today to show you what I mean, all right? I've got some creative things here in a box next to me. First, I've got some watercolors. Maybe you're getting ready for school and you're getting your watercolors ready, okay? If you're artistic, I bet you would have a lot of fun creating something with these. Next, I've got a math worksheet. This isn't really an official one, I just created it myself. That's why it's kind of random up here. But you have to be very creative to solve a math problem. You know, there's more than one way to figure out the right answer. So you have to use your creativity to figure it out. And as you get older, you'll see that's true more and more. So math takes creativity. We don't always think about that. Then I've got one of my favorite things to use to be creative, and that is Legos, right? I've got a bunch whoa, of random Legos here. And oh, don't hit yourself in the tooth. That's not good. It takes a lot of creativity to turn a bunch of random blocks into a fortress or a barn or a castle. But I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that could totally do it. I even saw some kids lately that used Legos to make a working roller coaster. I mean, that's a lot of creativity. So we know that God made us to be creative. But why? Why? Is it just for fun? Or do you think God had a plan? Spoiler alert, he did. Do you think he had a plan or an idea about how we could use this creativity in the world? Let's look back at Paul's letter because that kind of gives us a clue as to God's plan. It says, we are God's, what? His handiwork, okay? We're his creation, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So God created us to belong to Jesus, okay? Jesus gave up his life so we could have a relationship with God. And it's our relationship with Jesus that helps us see things differently, see the world in a more creative way. It helps us see what people might need. And when we care about people, it's because they matter to God. We notice when they need something and that makes us want to help them. So how does creativity to fit in? Well, it says, we were created to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So when we see people in need, we can use our creativity to find out ways to help. Kind of like, remember that paint set I just showed you? How could we get creative with this to help someone? Mm, you know what? Sometimes our parents have a really tough day and they might feel tired or discouraged, but we could use some art skills to make a cool card and create something beautiful to cheer them up. I bet that would be an awesome way to use creativity. Or what about math, right? We could use our math skills to get creative and help someone learn how to solve a problem that comes really easy to us. You know, it takes creativity to solve problems and to help other people. And how about our Legos, right? I'm gonna have to pick these up because you don't wanna step on them. But we can use our building skills to help your brother or sister um, create something. They'll feel like such a big kid because they're building something with you. And you can use your creativity skills to bright up their day. It's like Paul wrote in his letter. Let's read that one more time, Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. God made us to do good things. He wants us to follow his example, to be creative. And he gave us different kinds of creativity. We're not the same. But one thing that ties us together is that God made us to do good works, to love people, to serve people with our creativity. You know, sometimes we think creativity is only about art or music, but the truth is there's lots of ways to be creative. God has given you different ways to be creative. He's designed you in a unique way, and you can use your creativity to love him and to love others. So what I want you to remember today is this. God created you so you can be creative. I want you to think about the things you like most. Think about the things that come easily to you. Maybe you can always make people laugh. I know there's some of you really good at that. You can use your sense of humor to brighten someone's day. Or if someone's sick, you can make uh, them a get well card. Or like I said, if your parents are really tired, they've been up with your baby sister all night, get creative for ways to entertain your little brother or sister so they can get some rest. Or if your best friend is really sad, use your creative skills and kind words to make them smile. Ask your parents how they've seen creativity in you and definitely ask God how you can show creativity in the way that you live. 
Remember, you can trust God no matter what. And he's made you in a unique and amazing way so you can help people around you by being creative. Let's pray and thank God for that. Dear God, we can look around at everything you've made and see that you're creative. And God, I thank you that you created us in your image. We're your handiwork, God, the work of your hands. And I pray, God, you would show us how we can use the creativity you placed inside us to serve and love others around us, to make the world a better place. I thank you, Jesus, that all of us are different and unique, and you've given us different ways to just serve you and be creative. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. So get creative. Ask your parents, what is inside of you that God wants to bring to life in a new and a fresh way? See you guys on Sunday and tune in on Friday for our last Wacky Wednesday scores. It's going to be fun. Bye, guys. Hey! 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 You were so funny, Hodge. Mm -hmm.